everything is threatening you right now, you have to innovate. Last week at Verticon, Robinson announced the R88, and it's their first truly new helicopter in decades, and they are stepping into a completely different space. For years, Robinson has dominated the light helicopter category, but the competition is gaining ground, and it is a huge deal, not just because it's a new aircraft, but because of what it represents. The question is, did Robinson just save itself, or did they take their biggest gamble yet? That's like autopilot, dude. How do you fly a helicopter? Well, I'm gonna show you. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Devin. I am a helicopter air ambulance pilot, but I started my journey in the R-22 and the R-44, and I love Robinson helicopters. Yes, they have their pros and they have their cons, but overall, I am a fan of the Robinson helicopter company. And they released their R-88 last week, and I was like really excited. I put out that video, and I really enjoyed it. Now that I've had some time to really reflect on the R88 and the industry as a whole, the reflections I'm having, are, they're pretty significant. So in this video, I am going to lay out my analysis and my case for what the R88 really means, what it means for Robinson, what it means for the industry as a whole. Like I said, I have some pretty controversial opinions. I like Robinson for some things. I dislike him for other things. I want to hear your thoughts. As I go through this video and lay out my thoughts, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. How are you analyzing this? It is really interesting, my thoughts, how they've developed over the last week. This is a much bigger deal than I initially thought. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into it. So I'm going to break this analysis down into three parts, and these are like the three most crucial things. The first point I want to talk about is why Robinson had to make this move. The competition is pulling ahead. It is no surprise that this is the first point. If you are in the helicopter industry or just looking at it from afar, there's a good chance you've heard about the Cabri G2 and this is a newer aircraft that has come on the scene and very quickly this helicopter is growing in its dominance and it is eating into one of Robinson's biggest categories, which is flight training. Flight training is what the R-22 and the R-44, that's one of the biggest things that they do. And the Cabri G2 is coming into this market. The Cabri G2 is a significantly better helicopter, and I have flown with the R-22 and the R, uh, the Cabri G2. I, I love the R-22, but objectively, in my opinion, I think the Cabri G2 is a way better helicopter. It's got a three-bladed articulated rotor system. It's got a center cyclic, which does doesn't really seem like it would be that big of a deal, but when you step in that helicopter, you're like, oh, I'm in a helicopter. It's got a finisher on tail rotor. It just feels like a more substantial, safer helicopter. It is a better helicopter in pretty much every regard. I remember my first flight in the Cabri G2. It was after I had flown the R22 and the R44, and the difference was immediately clear. Less vibration, more stable. I just felt safer. I felt like if the engine failed, I had a better chance with a heavier, higher inertia rotor system. And I have to say that center cyclic, it is such a weird point, but and I don't want to get stuck on it but that center cyclic it's a big deal the t-bar is fine it works but that center cyclic is a big deal the cabri g2 is just a better helicopter if you look at the industry holistically the cabri g2 is growing in its dominance if you have the money to spare and you are looking at an r22 versus a cabri g2 if money is not a factor in all likelihood i think most people would go with the cabri g2 as a training helicopter and it's not just the cabri g2 i don't know if this is true or not but i have heard rumors that cabri is thinking about or already designing a Cabri G4 and if this Cabri G4 comes out with like four doors it can hold four or five passengers it's a bigger version of the G2 well then that will directly rival the R44 so then if you're Robinson you've got the Cabri G2 which is going to be a problem for your R22 if Cabri releases a G4 that directly challenges your R44 and your R66 so that's just Cabri and then I made a video, I'll post a link to it right here, but last year, Hill announced the HX-50. Now, I have a ton of questions and thoughts about the Hill HX-50, but if they are actually able to bring that to market the way they talk about it and at the price point that they're saying that it will be released at, then the Hill HX-50 is absolutely gonna obliterate any reason for someone to buy a Robinson. That Hill HX-50 is just a more superior helicopter if they can actually bring it to market. So that is Cabri and Hill, those are two threats. And then we have the third threat. The third threat is EV tolls. There, you've got companies like Beta Technologies, Archer, Whisk, all of these EV tolls are on the go. Now, I don't think this is gonna be like uh, next month, six months. Do I even think it's gonna be in a year? No, but three, 
five, seven, ten years. Absolutely. I think these EV tolls are going to be real. I think there's a real potential here. I used to work for a company called Beta Technologies and I don't have any affiliation with them now. But if you go look at their Instagram, they are actively flight testing these EV tolls. So these are absolutely coming. So if you're Robinson, put yourself in their shoes. Okay, you got the Cabri G2 potentially the G4, and then you've got the Hill HX50, and then you've got uh, all the EV toll companies, and then all of the other established helicopter companies that are maybe making smaller helicopters. Everything is threatening you right now. You have to innovate. So that is point one. Robinson had to innovate. They have threats coming in from every side. Everything is pushing the king out. Robinson is the king in the situation. Everything is pushing the king out. All right, this is point two, and I want to spend the most time here talking about this let's talk about the market for the r88 so they threw a saffron engine in this it produces almost a thousand shaft horsepower what they are targeting specifically and you can see this in all the promotional videos but they are targeting a brand new sector utility firefighting ems law enforcement now yes in the r44 and the r66 you could kind of do these things but the r88 is a way different style platform they like truly built an aircraft for helicopter air ambulance and utility and we're going to talk about the rotor system next but separate that for a moment let's look at the body of the aircraft in general i think the fuselage in the airframe is pretty decent i think for helicopter air ambulance for utility yeah this is like kind of right in line with what you'd expect from like a large helicopter manufacturer it's got a large cabin it makes sense for helicopter air ambulance for utility it makes sense so i don't knock them for any design of the cabin or the fuselage i think that makes sense here is what we need to talk about we have to talk about the two-bladed rotor system so yes robinson are known for the two-bladed rotor system, the semi-rigid underslung rotor system that exists in the R22, the 44, and the R66. There are pros and cons to this system. Pros, it is lighter, simpler, cheaper. Um, it's just a very simple and easy system to operate. In terms of cons, the biggest one is low G mass bumping, and it's just a more dangerous system. More blades and different styles of rotor systems, rigid articulated rotor systems are just safer. When I initially heard about the R88 and I saw the design, I was like, okay, yeah, obviously they stuck with the two-bladed rotor system and I can actively make the case for why it's okay that they put the two-bladed rotor system on it because I truly do believe some of the, those things. Like, yes, it is lighter, it is simpler, it's easier to maintain, and there are proven designs that have a two-bladed rotor system, like the Bell 212, uh, the Huey, there are proven designs, and the R22 and the R44 and the R66, those are working flying helicopters and they are safe. So th there is absolutely a case to be made for the two-bladed rotor system. However, now that I think about it, I mean, the R88 with a two-bladed rotor system is quite the design. You know, if you are the pilot of this helicopter and it is a hot summer day and you are just riding around getting bounced by thermals and it's turbulent, if you are the only person in this helicopter and maybe you're like returning somewhere and you're light on fuel, this helicopter is going to be moving around a lot and you're going to be jostling around a lot, which is fine. Everyone, all of us are used to it. But when you are in a helicopter of this size with a two bladed rotor system, that gives me a lot of concerns. I'm sure the fuselage weight will be heavy enough that it'll ride smooth, but the concerns of low G mass bumping are significant and we have to talk about Robinson has their own SFAR, SFAR 73, which they had to put in place because people were dying in these helicopters. Now, there, it's hard because the reason people were dying in these helicopters is because they were like some of the most, they were the most affordable helicopter option. So they were the most abundant and people would just do dumb stuff in them and they would get themselves killed. Is that specifically the fault of the design or is that specifically the fault that this is just like the lowest cost helicopter so it is going to be the first option for the most people it's kind of it's kind of both but part of the s 73 could have been eliminated with a third or fourth blade and i've already laid out the case on why i think they chose to do it and i, I totally get it but i do have some very strong concerns just with a helicopter of this size like with the market you're targeting utility helicopter air ambulance and the more time i've spent thinking about this um the more concerns i have and so let's just quickly look at like other two-bladed rotor systems that are still operating for helicopter air ambulance you have one you have the bell 206 i can't think of another two-bladed rotor system that is still like the huey but that is like law enforcement and 
um, maybe some like sheriff's office, but it's not like a primarily used for helicopter or ambulance. You have the Bell 206, which is still used for sure, but that is being phased out. And it's being phased out because it's hard to find parts and they're becoming older and older, but there are not operators choosing to use a two-bladed rotor system. And one of the main reasons why is because it's more dangerous, but also speed. Speed is not like the biggest factor in helicopter EMS, but if you are choosing a helicopter over a ground ambulance, why are you doing that? Because of remoteness and because of speed. And if you are flying in a two-bladed rotor system, the speed is inherently gonna be less than that of a three or four or five bladed helicopter. If you're an operator and you're looking at like what the R88's top speed is gonna be versus a Bell 407, an EC-130, an EC-135, uh, a Bell 429, the R88 is gonna be the slowest. I'll wrap up the second point here because I could just keep going, but I laid out in the first point why Robinson had to innovate because they are being boxed in and there are threats coming from multiple directions from competitors and I understand why they had to release the R88 and why they chose to. They had to. I, I, I laid out they had to. They had to innovate and try something new. So they did that with the R88. I think the platform is great. Then you get to the rotor system and I personally believe that the design choice to go with a two-bladed rotor system on the R88 potentially could be the decline of the company. And I know that sounds really dramatic, but just the thought process I have here is if the R88 doesn't really catch on because it's an interesting design, okay, then you have your other three models, the R22, the R44, and the R66. Well, we talked about the R22, and if Cabri can continue to grow in market share, and if they can get the economies of scale down and they can get the price down, then the R22 is in serious trouble. If Hill comes out with the HX50, then that is a huge problem for the R44 and the R66. If Cabri comes out with the G4, that is a huge problem for the R44 and the R66. And if the R88 happens to not catch on due to the design of the large two-bladed rotor system, then potentially you could have a nail in the coffin from all sides of this company. And the third point we'll get to, but I just, before I go on to it, because it's like another like real challenging topic, but I want to say, do not discount Robinson as a company. Do not discount their engineering team. Do not discount their leadership team. Do not discount the legacy they have and the connections they have. Robinson is an extremely intelligent company. They are a strong company, they are a big company, and they've got a very good understanding of what they're doing. So take everything I say with a grain of salt because I am just a lowly pilot and these are just my opinions and I'm just trying to articulate them and work through them, but this is something I have to tell myself as, as well, but do not discount them because they do know what they're doing and they are not dumb. They are smart. All right, so we'll run through point three rather quickly because this video is already going to be longer than I want it to be, but uh, challenges ahead. The R88 is at least four to five to six years away from flying, and one problem I potentially see is delays happening. Now, delays in aviation are just part of the industry, but... People will remember the hype of 2025. People will remember this week at Verticon of all the excitement, all the woo of the R88 announcement. And if this stretches into 2030, 2031, 2032, 2034, 2035, if delays happen, then this is gonna be a problem for the project. And this is the final like really large point of the video that we need to talk about is the price. Now Robinson, and I could be completely wrong here, but I, I think what I remember them talking about was that the price of this helicopter is 3.3 million. Now I'm not exactly sure how this 3.3 million is laid out. Is 3.3 million the starting price of this helicopter? helicopter and then after options for helicopter air ambulance utility the price could go up or is 3.3 million what they're thinking they're going to come to market with with a utility and helicopter air ambulance model i have to imagine that five years down the road and with a helicopter air ambulance interior 3.3 million it's going to be more than that I, I believe these helicopters are going to cost more than that and that's okay if you start to get to like the four 4.5, 5 million dollar segment, potentially, I have no idea, but if, if this price does creep up, why would someone choose to buy the R88, a new helicopter, 
versus a more established platform from Robinson's competitors, Airbus, Bell, any of the Leonardo, any of the large competitors out there. When you start to get into those larger price points, why would someone choose this helicopter? And this is just me saying it, like I said, I really am trying to be very careful here because I don't wanna give anyone the wrong impressions. If this comes in at four and a half million dollars, why would you try a new helicopter that's gonna be slower, that has a less desirable rotor system style, and it's a brand new product? And like I said, Robinson is extremely smart and all the people at that company are extremely smart, so they are gonna know how to price this thing, but I just see potential problems with a three to four million dollar helicopter rivaling another single engine utility platform that's already established. So to wrap this video up, the R88 represents a necessary evolution for Robinson. They are in a changing market. They have competitors coming in from every direction and I believe they had to innovate. So they built the R88. I think that made a lot of sense. I think the fuselage makes a lot of sense. I think it makes sense to step into utility firefighting helicopter air ambulance. Very significant concerns about a two bladed rotor system on a helicopter of this size, but it has been proven. The R22 and the R44 and the R66 rotor system is proven, it has its problems, but every helicopter has its problems. A two-bladed rotor system is still being flown today. Bell 206s are used significantly in utility, and they are still used in helicopter air ambulance. So it could happen, but at this size, I don't know if people are really jumping on the bandwagon to get back into it when there are better rotor system designs out there. And then finally, we just talked about it, but the price point is extremely significant where this is actually priced in. Inflation, everyone's talking about inflation, but inflation is gonna continue to climb, so everything is gonna get expensive. But if you take like our prices right now, like 3.3 million, for this helicopter, but after options, how much does it actually cost? If it's really $4 million versus what you could get like a new 407, um, an A-Star, other utility platforms, a used EC-135, whatever the H-140 starts to come in priced at, you're really, <laughs> at $4 million, I mean, it's gonna be, I, it's like I said, it's gonna be hard to justify why go with this new helicopter with a uh, inferior rotor design. I don't know if I should share this, but I'm gonna share this because I just started this channel to share my thoughts. There are so many factors that I'm not even thinking about and I'm not, I don't know if I'm smart enough to really understand all the dynamics here. And I don't know if I'm really understanding the situation correctly. However, I have laid out my thoughts in this video for what I think. I, I, I don't know. I am extremely curious to know what you guys all think. Please leave your comments down below because I'm just really hyper curious. I really like Robinson as a company. Like, I don't know. I've been like one of the people that have supported Robinson the most. Uh, I really, I like Robinson as a company. I think this rotor system could be a problem, but there, there's also the chance that I just, I'm not seeing something. Uh, the, I'm sure the R88 will fly and I'm sure it will work, but when you think about large operators, I'm just not exactly sure why they would choose to do it, but I could totally be wrong. Please engage with this video and let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. So with all that said, if you found yourself enjoying this video, smash the like button, subscribe for all kinds of helicopter content, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.